Hey what's going on guys then my for simple snippets back with another video tutorial on boolean algebra logic gates and digital electronics as a whole so in this video tutorial we are going to be discussing and studying the concept and the circuit of clocked jk flip flop and in the previous couple of video tutorials we've been seeing different types of flip flops so we've covered sr flip flop we've covered the clock and how clock works we've also seen the d flip flop so now we are moving on to jk flip flop so let's start off with today's video tutorial now jk flip flop is again a modified version of sr flip flop and it helps us in eliminating the race condition which happens in the sr flip flop so let's see how it works now as you can see on the screen this is currently an sr flip flop so what we are going to do is we are going to convert it into a jk flip flop so the way we convert this circuit into a jk flip flop is we take this output from q and connect it all the way to r and we take this output from q bar and connect it all the way to s as a third input so let me just show you what i mean okay so as you can see on the screen what i did is i took output of q and fed it back to the very first nand gate that is where the r input was and now this has become a jk input and you can see for q bar i've taken that output and passed it to the s nand gate so this is basically the jk flip flop so now i can replace s and r and name it as jk so j over here and k over here so now this is converted into a jk flip flop and this gives us an advantage to tackle that race condition other than that this working of jk flip flop is exactly same as sr flip flop so let's see the different cases and we'll construct a truth table now and understand how that different case works of race condition so when the clock is zero let me just write down case 1 so case 1 clock equals to 0 let's say j and k is equal to 0 or something else but when the clock is 0 we can see whenever one of the input of any of the nand gate is 0 the output is always going to be 1 right so we, that's the truth table of nand gate i've not drawn it over here but the output of a nand gate is always high if any of the input is 0 just remember that in fact if you want i'll just draw the truth table for nand gate as well Okay, so as you can see on the screen, if any of the input in the first three cases is 0, the output is always going to be 1. So this output 1, 1 is fed to the next line of NAND gates. And remember when we studied SR latch or SR gate, whenever the output of the first NAND gates is 1, 1 and when output input of the two NAND gates for the SR latch is 1 1 the output is always going to be the previous state so it is going to, always going to be the latch state so if clock is 0 regardless of what JK is so even if JK is 1 or 0 or any of the team any of the two the output is always going to be the previous state so S and R let me just first replace this S and R to J and K because we are studying JK flip flop so regardless what JK is so JK is don't care condition the output is always going to be Q n minus 1 and Q bar n minus 1 okay because we are seeing the next state and we are getting the previous state the way we get previous state is we have to assume one of the output so let's say if Q was 0 because when the both NAND gates are getting 1 1 as input for the second input we need to assume because depending upon what the second input is over here and here the output is going to be calculated right so if Q was 1 and if Q is fed back over here as 1 this will be 0 and this 0 will be fed back to the upper NAND gate now so 1 and 0 will give you 0 complement which will again give you 1 and then this 1 is again fed back will give you 0 which means that the state is locked and this is not as the latch state latch or memory or previous state okay so this was case number one when the clock is zero so when the clock num clock is one that's when the jk flip-flop is activated and that's when the different states happen okay so let's assume case number two we have selected clock equals to one and we have j as zero and k as one okay now let's say for example we add these values over here so we have assumed j as zero we've assumed k as one right and clock is going to be one in both the cases now you can see for the upper NAND gate 0 we have 1 input as 0 which means the output is always going to be 1 for the upper NAND gate right regardless of what this third input is that is the pink line which is coming if there is only 1 0 even if there is 1 0 in the NAND operation input the output is always going to be 1 so we are getting over here 1 directly but for the lower NAND gate we have two ones, and so we need this third input also and this third input if you follow this circuit line it is coming from Q so which means that it depends upon the previous output so let's say Q was 1 okay so this 1 is going to be fed back over here via the pink line so we have three ones, which means the output is going to be 0 now for 1 0 we can calculate the output for the SR latch so if this is 0 which is supplied to the lower NAND gate over here the output is going to be 1 and this 1 is supplied over here so we have 1 and 1 the output is going to be 0 so initially we assumed Q as 1 but now we are getting 0 and Q bar we are getting as 1 so initially it must be 0 which means that it, it got flipped and this is basically the reset state so the output here is going to be 0 and 1 this is known as reset state now let's see the next case case number 3 
okay so now we are on case number three clock equals to one j equals to one k equals to zero so we have j equals to one and k equals to zero clock is always one so for lower nand gate the output is going to be one so one is fed over here for the lower sr latch nand gate let's see for the upper nand gate the output is dependent on the third pink line because we have two ones so one more input is required to calculate the output which is coming from q bar and we've seen in the previous state it was one so let's supply one over here so we have three ones so the output is going to be zero so when we supply zero one the output over here is going to be one because one of the input is zero for the upper nand gate so output is going to be one so when it was zero the it is switched to one and q bar becomes zero so the output is one and zero so this is the set state this is reset this is set okay the input was one comma zero now let's see what happens for zero zero first so we are taking j as zero and k as zero as well so both the outputs will be one and one so when we are supplying one and one to the sr latch remember we were getting the previous output itself that is the latch state so for case four which is clock equals to one j equals to one and k equals to one we will always get latch state or memory state or previous state the way we get that previous state is when the input to upper and lower sr latch is one and one we have to assume one of the output so let's assume q is one that is the previous state was one so this one from the upper latch is being transferred to the lower one so we get one over here the output is zero now this zero is again transferred to the upper one so zero zero dot one complement would be again one right so the output going is going to be the same one and zero so repeated one and zero you'll get if you apply input as zero and zero to the jk inputs so this means the output is going to be q n minus one and q bar n minus one that is the previous state so now let's see the main important case wherein the race condition was happening in the sr flip flop that is when the inputs were one and one so let's say we are giving input one and one over here in this case j and k is one so case number five which is the main case that is different in jk compared to sr so clock is one j equals to one and k equals to one so let's see what happens over here now we are assuming j is one clock is one k is one clock is one so this third input coming from the pink lines coming from the output is very important so let's assume over here first let me just erase this out so we have to again make assumptions so let's assume q to be one so q equals to one now this q output is being transferred over here and given input to this lower nand gate which means all three are one and the output is going to be zero so the lower nand gate of sr latch gets zero coming from this nand gate q bar would be then zero since we are assuming this as one so q bar is transferred to the upper latch of the j input over here so since there is one zero in this three inputs the output is going to be one so this is supplied over here now zero for the lower nand gate which means the output is going to be one so we got a new output for q bar one and this one is transferred back again over here so one and one will give you zero so q becomes zero now so which means that when we applied or when we assumed q as one and q bar as zero and when j k and the clock was one the output got switched to zero right that is q was one it became zero q bar was zero it became one which means it toggled state right let's again try to see and compare this with new assumption now let's assume q equals to zero and q bar as one and we'll keep j as one clock as one and k as one only so q is zero now that we've assumed right so this q is again transferred over here as zero so this becomes zero so the lower nand gate has one zero now which means the output is going to be one to this next nand gate so let me just write down one over here and q bar we've assumed one so this one is transferred to the upper nand gate over here let me just erase this and let me just write down one over here so three ones which means the output is going to be zero so the upper nand gate now gets zero so for the sr latch the upper nand gate gets zero which means the output is going to be one so we got a new output again this toggled from zero to one and this one is fed back to the lower nand gate of the sr latch so we have two ones which gives the output of zero so again toggle to zero so now you can see a pattern over here that is the previous output of q or q bar is being flipped or being complemented every time you apply one one and the clock is one so this state is known as q n bar complement and q n so q n becomes q n bar and q bar n becomes q n and this state is known as toggle state so this is very important to understand because this is the only difference that is happening in the truth table of sr flip flop versus this jk flip flop and instead of the race condition which was an undesirable output we are getting a toggle output wherein the previous output is complemented 
So this is the feature of clocked JK flip flop, which is different. And we are, we avoid that race condition. Instead of that, we use this toggle condition and this toggle condition is used in switching between different values in digital circuits. So it is pretty much useful to us. So yeah, that's it for this video guys. This was the major difference between the SR flip-flop and JK flip-flop and this is the working of JK flip-flop. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and make sure you subscribe to this channel. Peace.